bunch of shit that I didn't need to bring with me on my trip. My name is Melissa. Thanks for stopping by. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family while you're here. If you are already part of it, thanks so much for coming back to take a look at this video. This video is actually a part two to another video and it was the um, what to pack for Lipo 360 BBL surgery. It's like a supply list, what you should bring with you. Whew. I'm going to be kind of winded and out of breath during um, during this video, not just because I'm a big girl, but because I just had surgery. I am about a little over two weeks post-op and I'm in my stage two Faha and I just recently graduated to the second row of my hooks. So I am being compressed right now. In my first video, I will link that above here if you want to take a look at that. I tried to really think about things that I um, would need and want while I was there in Miami for recovery, what would help my recovery be a little bit easier and smoother. And I had to do it in a way where I could fit it into two suitcases, not go over the weight limit, and still have everything that I need. So there were a couple things that I did pick up while I was in Miami. Let me just jump right into the video and talk about things that I absolutely did not use and did not need while I was there in Miami. So the first thing would be hydrogen peroxide. So as you know, hydrogen peroxide removes blood stains from, from fabric and a lot of dolls use it to remove blood stains from their fajas. Well, my faja that I woke up in after surgery was black, so you couldn't really see if I had a lot of um, fluid or drainage. And when I did wash it, I just washed it in, the, in a washing machine, regular laundry detergent, and then air dried it, and it looked completely great. And since I use the shower curtain liner, the pillow protectors, and the old sheets, and all that other crap, I didn't have any blood stains on any of the hotel's linens or mattress, so I didn't have to use the hydrogen peroxide. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a hard video. <sighs> Let me just slow it down. I did not have to use any of the hydrogen peroxide, so I could have left that at home. Another thing is, I don't know why I decided to bring this with me because I thought, I don't know. Remember I was telling you that I was gonna bring this gold bond powder to help with itching that I heard occurs underneath the faja. I think that's more for once you've advanced to your stage two and like later on, weeks after surgery, when your skin is healing and everything is coming back, I think that's more when this might come in handy, but um, I haven't used it yet. I haven't even opened it. So this was something I totally should have not even packed. Another thing that I, pack too many of but again you know it was only a dollar were these shower curtain liners from the Dollar Tree I brought four of them and I only ended up using two I used one on the bed that was in the hotel room and then I used one to cover the backseat air mattress that I had used in the car if you want to take a look at that video you can go ahead and click here and I show you exactly how I prepared the bed for after surgery and also uh, the backseat of the car for traveling home after surgery, traveling to and from the doctor's office to my massage appointments, just to make sure that everything was protected. So I bought four, I only needed two. So I have two extra. Um, another thing that I thought I would use was this gel eye mask. So I know that, uh, you know, pretty much everyone um, experiences swelling after surgery. In particular, myself, after every surgery I've ever had, including even just like dental surgery, I always get really swollen around my eyes. So I thought, oh, I'll bring an ice pack. That'll help bring the swelling down and blah, blah, blah. Well, in the case of having a BBL and you're unable to lie on your back while you sleep and you have to lay on your stomach, because you're laying on your stomach, gravity, you're gonna wake up with puffiness in your face anyway. So this did not do anything. 
Sure, it felt great and nice on my eyes when I, you know, would sit back and relax and wear this thing, but I didn't have to bring it. It didn't take the, any swelling down. Um, simply getting up, moving around, drinking um, enough fluids, enough water, that was what was helping push all those fluids out and get and decrease the swelling. So that was something that I did not have to bring. Another thing I really didn't need um, was the Soothe Hers Peri Bottle that I had purchased. It's that telescoping peri bottle. I thought this would be really nice to use um, after having a bowel movement to cleanse the area, which is what I used it for. Um, but honestly, using the wipes, I feel was good enough. I only used this maybe like um, two or three times because after post-op, I think I was post-op day two or day three, my surgeon cleared me to be able to take showers. So instead of using this, you know, to clean myself after having a bowel movement, because usually, okay, this is two, this is probably TMI, but I'm gonna let you know. I usually only have one bowel movement a day and it's usually in the morning. So I would wake up in the morning and I would have my bowel movement and then I would take a shower. Thus, no longer being needed. So this, I didn't really need to buy. Another thing that I did use, but I did not need to buy so much of them, were these, the poise pads. These are the ultimate long length, you know, um, dolls said they use them to help absorb any drainage that they have and also um, to help with extra compression. Well, I did not have any of my stomach lipodes that you can see, like it's still, I still got a, I still got a belly here. Um, I just had my entire back, like from here all the way down, my bra, my bra fat rolls and everything down. I had that um, liposuction. So the lipo holes that were underneath both of my breasts, that's where I leaked the most out of. The first and second day, by the third day, I wasn't really draining from that area at all. The only other areas I was mainly draining from were, was, the lipo hole that is at the top of the butt crack and the two holes that are down above your pelvic in your pelvic area and those areas i was draining from just during massages when they would have to reopen those holes to squeeze the fluid out so what am i trying to say about these poise pads oh what i'm trying to say is i bought a pack of 27 and honestly i used I haven't even used half the pack here. I'm currently using four of them for my bathroom toilet seat. And if you're curious as to what I am using them there for, comment below and I'll be happy to film a video of three, three, is there really three? Let me think. One, two, three, Okay, five, there's five. Five tricks um, that you can use during recovery to make life hella easier, a lot easier, so much easier, okay? And they're not, they're not expensive, it's not gonna cost you a ton of money, but there's five tips that I have discovered during this, uh, the two week post-op period of things that I can use that I currently have that I was like, well shit, why didn't I just do this in the first place? Because I could have saved myself money from spending it on this. So if you're interested in seeing that video, let me know down below so that I can film it. Because if no one wants to see it, why film it? Anyways, oh, okay, so I remember in, my, in that video, I said that I was not going to bring my Arnica gel with me. I was gonna leave it home because I felt like it was something that you would use post-op when you got home. Well, I was in Miami for about two weeks, so I was post-op while I was there. As soon as your surgeon clears you for uh, being able to shower and whatnot, I wouldn't put this on the any incision site, but on the bruised areas. And I'll insert some pictures here um, of like how bruised I was. So all those bruised areas, you should be putting the Arnica gel topically on those areas to help the, bruise, the bruises heal. Um, it also does help with swelling. 
And I am so glad that I did buy these Arnica tablets, because let me tell you, I took these like crack. I still am taking these like crack, and they work. Like, they help with muscle pain, stiffness, swelling, bruising. I take two tablets every four hours, and it really helps. Another thing is I went and um, I had brought like six or seven of those pajama tops. I brought two of the zip up tops, two zip up granny dresses. Honestly, I used two zip up granny dresses when I would have to like, during like the first couple of days uh, when I would have to leave and go like to go get my massages or go to the doctor's office, I would wear those. Um, the other like pullover nightgowns and stuff, I thought I would wear those when I was lounging around the hotel room. Uh-uh. This is what you wear. Well, not this, you would wear your stage one faha, but I literally just laid around in my faha all day. My faha and my adult diaper over, since it was an open crotch. I just laid in that all day long. That's it. Needing to buy plastic or rubber slippers to prevent uh, the blood from dripping into your fuzzy sandals, I would say was definitely a good idea because um, there were numerous times when I did have a few drops here and there of bodily fluids on those rubber sandals that I could easily clean off. So I'm glad I didn't bring my fuzzy slippers to wear. And I didn't bring the massage roller with me either because I was getting massages there. So there was no need for me to bring that. Um, the seamless tanks. So I had initially brought four seamless tanks with me. I didn't wear one of them because my surgeon told me to wear my stage one Faha for two weeks and not to switch to my stage two until after that time. He also told me not to use my boards or foams until after two weeks when I move into my uh, stage two Faha. So I didn't need to wear the tanks or anything. So those are the things that I pretty much did not need to buy. There are things that I brought with me that I did not need while I was there, but I will need them eventually, so I'm not even gonna mention those. But those are the things that I could have just not even bothered buying. So hopefully this video was helpful to help you kind of compile your packing list on what you need to bring with you if you're gonna be traveling for your surgery. I mean, hell, even if you are gonna be staying local, it's still a good idea to make sure you have everything at home that you need. So don't forget to click uh, down below in the description box. I do have a free printable packing list, looks like this, that you can print out to help you kind of like keep track and stay organized of um, what you need for your surgery. I'm gonna be filming my BBL surgery experience, Miami experience while I was there pretty soon. So if there are any questions that you have for me or would like me to answer about the surgery, the doctor that I went to, the places I went to for massages, where I stayed, anything like that, let me know down in the comments so that I can make sure I get your answer questioned, your question answered. Um, see, I told you, this Faha must be cutting the blood supply off to my brain. In that video, I will also be showing my before and after photos, progress photos, talking about measurements, the whole shebang, everything. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified every time that I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.